Okay, hello. Welcome to What's the Story Mother on the Studio Utani channel. Um, made it all the way to episode two, so yay. Um, this is Matt talking, and once again, I am joined by Baker. What up, Utani Nation? Yeah, and um, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about um, the. Uh, alien marvel comics series today now what's funny about this is this was actually on my list of stuff to talk about uh for the first episode and somehow i actually uh, skipped over it mm -hmm. <laughs> like like i had um i had uh one was uh the blade runner rpg two was marvel's alien and three was was dune and somehow i, I skipped marvel's alien well, it gave me time to finish it so yeah 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 so it, you know it worked out but it's just it's kind of like the underpants gnomes from south park it's like <laughs> where did, what happened to step two right <laughs> it's just like that yeah yeah <laughs> um before we jump into um talking about the comic though uh, just a couple bit of um couple bits of sci-fi and alien related news um um now i haven't actually read it myself uh but uh william gibson's alien three um his uh, his script that he he wrote for the film uh has been published and uh can now be purchased for your reading pleasure um for those that are interested and of course alien three uh, is well known for its uh, tumultuous um, production history, and one of those one of the problems is they never really had a finalized script, and for a while they were constantly like just chasing the story. And I think William William Gibson was like one of the first people, if I'm not mistaken, um, to uh, to turn in a uh, a script, and I believe very little of it actually ended up in alien three uh if so, anything at all did is he responsible for the wooden planet and the monks no 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 like that that, nope. that was um what's his face um shoot shoot i i i'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now vincent ward there you um, go yeah vincent ward uh who, which was the script that of course um fox at the time uh, signed off on and greenlit and then um mm -hmm you know, problems came up, creative disputes came up and uh, didn't end up being that. And um, this, in you know, despite the fact that Alien 3 does have a dedicated fan base um, and there's a lot of people who enjoy Alien 3, I, I, I kind of sure. consider it the one of the weaker Alien films. I, to be honest, it's actually probably my least favorite of all. Alien of 4, you like more? I, honestly, I kind of do. <laughs> I kind yeah. of like it because the it's, difference it's, is the difference is Alien Resurrection is like schlocky. It's yeah, it's super, more entertaining. I think it's less the pacing of Alien Three is rough, depending on yeah. the cut, especially. Yeah. But no, no, that's that's what I'm getting at. Alien yeah. Resurrection is like love it or hate it. It's a fully realized film, and it you know it it's more entertaining as mm -hmm. you said whereas alien 3 is a slog <laughs> and yeah. no and nothing happens in the movie until the act <laughs> until act 3 and i'm just sitting there just like me and justin doing the commentary part we're just so bored yeah. with ourselves <laughs> like nothing is happening there are no consequences to any of these actions this is uh, not even charles dance save it oh no no it was it was like the charles dance plot line doesn't go anywhere no <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's, yeah it's so messy um but there are little, there are little bright spots in in, in alien 3 but um yeah. you know that's that's kind of a story for another video but if you want to see at least one of the original scripts or do you want to read that um that is available and you know i don't know maybe we'll give it a shot and talk about it next week you know we'll, sure we'll see um also the check out the commentary tracks on studio yutani yeah that's right <laughs> you and justin have some good insights 
Yeah, yeah. And um, we've been, uh, the uh, the Alien Resurrection commentary will be coming out. Um, we've, um, <laughs> we're just kind of waiting for a good time for it, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Did you mention the Catwoman connection with the basketball scene? Um, <laughs> in, uh, in Alien Resurrection? I believe the the director of Catwoman was a uh, DP or assistant camera uh, or something he, like that. He, he yeah I, I i know he was involved i forget there's um, some connection there I, he might <laughs> i'm not sure if he was deep here he was production i seem to recall he was like production designer oh it could uh, be yeah um i'm not entirely sure but um but yeah well we haven't actually sat down and recorded it yet um okay but uh that that'll be a good one eventually it will happen um Another kind of bit of uh, interesting sci-fi news, and this is actually from a little bit ago. Apparently, Eva Longoria is uh, like producing a sci-fi series, yeah, um, based upon um, uh, a book uh, called "Sal and Ga Gabby Break the Universe." But that wasn't really what intrigued me. What what intrigued me is that um, the article that I was reading made note that um eva longoria just made her directorial debut and the film is currently in post-production um her directorial debut is flaming hot which is a <laughs> it's a it's a story uh, it's the true story of the guy that invented flaming hot cheeto no way i was gonna no, make no, a joke about that <laughs> no 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 that is i was i i it's for real and i i believe i heard the story before the guy was like a janitor and he's like messing around with like the seasonings or whatever i think and i've he, heard this too now that you say that yeah yeah and he make he accidentally makes flaming hot cheetos and says hey this is pretty good i'm going to god bless him i'm gonna personally call the ceo of, of <laughs> cheeto you know, frito-lay or whatever and everyone's like you know you can't do that you can't call the ceo you're skipping through multiple levels of you know quality control blah 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 but then i guess the ceo liked the idea and he liked the flaming hot cheetos and that's a thing <laughs> how do you make a whole movie about that though i i i don't know i guess we'll see when it comes <laughs> out but i'm just like that's kind of crazy to me um i i, I guess kind of the tie between those two uh, yeah, projects this... <laughs> is um they're both like i sal and gabby break the universe is from a um a uh i i don't want to um say the wrong nationality but kind of latin um mm -hmm. author and um and with this uh with the story of the flaming hot cheetos the janitor was also uh latino or latin <laughs> i'm not uh, sure forgive, forgive me for not using the politically correct terminology but um it, it's uh and I, I guess that's kind of her thing i guess is trying to tell those stories about those people and it's like okay uh, yeah sure not really a sci-fi through line but no <laughs> no but it's i I don't know. I found that just incredibly amusing. And it started with me looking up sci-fi news. And I'm just like, that's that's pretty funny to me. But that's um, definitely that's good news. Yeah. <laughs> good news we're all around. Guys, we're finally getting a flaming hot Cheetos movie. Um it only took how long has film been around? A hundred yeah. some years. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. It's about it's about time, I say. Yeah. So uh, I guess now we'll move on to the main topic, which is Marvel's Alien, which um, concluded its arc, uh, its first arc anyway, um, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. Um, but uh, Baker just only read it uh, this past week, and uh, I um, I uh, read it uh, a little bit earlier in the week as well. Um, I actually had funny story. I actually had um bought the issues as they were coming out but i wasn't really keeping up with them so i just for a while i just kind of had them um and then when it came down to actually reading them you know for the show i i realized somehow i had skipped issue six and i <laughs> I, I i have a physical copy of all of them except for issue six and i'm like 
I don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> Did you uh, jump right to issue seven from issue five then? No, no, I, I have um, I have mysterious sources uh, that permitted me to uh, read the contents of issue six. So I didn't mm -hmm. just jump to seven, but I was just kind of like, I mean, I don't know. I thought I was picking these up regularly. I don't know how I missed six, but um, it's an but, important one. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, so kind of thoughts about this. So if, if you're following the channel, you know that I did a review of the first issue of this way back when it came out and uh, I was pretty harsh on it. And um, I really wasn't too blown away by it. Now, uh, people were saying that uh, I was being kind of harsh and um, mm -hmm. maybe I, I still stand by some of some of my criticism of it. I think it like if it, it's very, very front loaded with exposition, which that's yeah. normal for storytelling. But it, the problem with me wasn't so much the exposition as much as like I didn't know what kind of story this was setting up. And you know, I I, I needed to know what the conflict was like this happens all the time like even with movies like I, I, me and Justin I, I, you know what was the last Woody Allen movie that came out it was oh man uh, it, was, it was a rainy day in New York or something I, sure. any, anyway documentary anyway documentary that came out about him <laughs> oh I I have I don't know about that but I'm just kind of bringing this up as an example um mm -hmm. I I'm, the first like 10 minutes or so of the movie I just kind of lost because there's like okay there's like some witty banter here but I'm like I don't know what this movie is about sure yeah but then it like introduces a conflict like 10 minutes in and then it's like for me it's like okay boom now now I'm into this now mm -hmm. I know what this story is about I just I didn't get that from the first issue of Alien One, and it was like that. That's more or less what I was frustrated by, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I see where you're coming from. It does end with some interesting drama, some betrayals, you know. You, yeah, you can uh, kind of see where it might be going. Yeah, you see the beginnings uh, of like the action happening, but I'm still like lost. I'm like, right? Yeah, you know, like. The dream I, stuff, I was really confused about at first until mm -hmm. I finished the whole thing. That seemed very out of the ordinary for the series. Uh -huh. um, but I ended up liking it. I, I also, I'll say, I read these all back to back to back. I wasn't watch, waiting a week in between and thinking of it that way. And I could that... see why you'd front exposition. It's like, well, there's not going to be another one for two weeks or whatever. So Yeah, that, that actually might be the proper way to do it. But I... I'm also not really a great consumer of comic books. Um, yeah, I'm not usually either. Yeah, it, but They're um, very few. But um, the qualms that I had with issue one were resolved um, pretty readily in um, issue two. Um, <laughs> even like my criticisms of the artwork uh, in the first one, which mm. one of the things I was a little bit lost on is like how like and again this could just be me not like being a regular reader of comics I was like I don't know how these panels were supposed to oh. like, like how they're supposed to flow together you know like yeah in the way it draws your eye and, and all that jazz I thought that was like significantly improved in in the second issue and, sure and, and yeah. that but I, I don't know it does that is that just me did you get that uh, sense I had a couple times throughout reading it. I don't know if it was especially in issue one. The very last bit of uh, uh, issue seven, actually, the very last page I read wrong the first time because I was reading it in the wrong order. But okay. I mean, that, you know, uh, I, it's kind of like a rhythm, like you kind of, uh, yeah. it is like what pulls your eye. It's usually just left to right and right, right. up down. But sure. obviously, if you're in the manga, then you have to readjust. Yeah. Like going from well, driving yeah, stick that, to manual. That's a, that's a whole nother world. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, Alien and, manga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting, actually. <laughs> but um, an anime alien series? Oh. And, yeah, I'm down. Or, or, you know, do the manga series and then you do the anime adaptation and you know, put, yeah. it, put it on Netflix. I'm, I'm down. Do it. 
just even a movie that'd be tight yeah yeah that'd be cool but um i i guess what i'm kind of getting at there is i i felt like issue two kind of told me what the story was about and it was it yeah was like, i totally get where you're coming from there. and and that it's like that's my moment of like okay now i'm into this now i know what what we're doing i know what gabriel is trying to do and i know what obstacles he's going to face and that's that's the storytelling um mm -hmm. but I, I guess what i'm kind of trying to say with the artwork is i felt like and and i could just be reading into it a little bit more but i do kind of feel like because the story came more into focus in issue two my my theory and and this is just kind of me uh you know conjecture it, it, sure conjecture <laughs> that's a good word um is that the artists had more of an idea of what to do mm. with like whereas the first issue was almost like a free-for-all because it's like exposition 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 yeah there's now well, now we're telling a story mm -hmm. and a lot of the disparate locations and the mm -hmm. dream sequence and new yeah. characters you're like uh where, what's the focus here you have the through line character of gabe through the whole first comic but sure you're like okay it's about him until the very end and then you're oh, okay his son yeah i i mean so, I, get, I get oh that. we should I, say it's big yeah. spoilers also, oh, obviously oh, yeah, yes yes I, I mean if that wasn't obvious which maybe yeah. it wasn't um yeah, this is spoilers up um, into issue seven which is after this arc even so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but uh but no i i got that it was about gabriel but it that isn't all the information that I, I need. I, I need to know like, yeah, what's the conflict? What's he trying to do? It, it, it just, I felt like, I don't know. And again, maybe I'm just being just, I was being too harsh on it. I just didn't feel like I got that. And, but it mm -hmm. was, but moving past that, I, I, I think I've made my point pretty clear. Um, issue right. two, things picked up for me. And it was from that point on, I honestly started to really enjoy the story. And um, mm -hmm. overall, like, yeah, I mean, I'm not like blown away by it, but I think it's a solid little alien story. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it hits the, no it hits the right notes that it over, that it's supposed to hit. Um, it's got action. It's got you know these interpersonal drama it's got some suspenseful scary moments in it um mm -hmm. there, there's and there's and honestly there are some moments of like really good writing in it as well like uh, i know you weren't necessarily a fan of some of the dialogue but yeah there, but there were a couple <laughs> moments in here like uh, the reveal of like the, the the scientist lady what's her name jane or, oh, in issue seven? Or are you talking about Iris? Or is it, oh, Iris yeah. was the synth. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Iris, yeah, that that whole scene was that yeah. was that was a great reveal. Really cool. Uh, yeah, that was that, I I I like that a uh, bishop kind of like it's like bishop just straight up shoots uh, Iris, and um, you kind of had this moment of like, what the hell, bishop just broke one of the three you know uh, rules of robotics and then it's revealed that uh iris has white blood and therefore she is in fact an android and he's uh, gabriel asks like how did you know and he says uh just an instinct and i'm like that's mm -hmm. that's really good writing because yeah it, that was a great twist yeah yeah i i it, it's a great twist but it's also just really great uh kind of uh it's it's good dialogue because it gives you insight into the artificial intelligence a little how, bit like how bishop thinks yeah. yeah yeah bishop you know could have like broken the one of the three rules if he wasn't correct and it kind of just blurs that line between android and human and mm -hmm. i absolutely love that i, love I do that. too yeah, yeah i love the uh, the way it does play with perspective too with the uh, the alien like the dreams at first i was like where is this going i did like a yeah. lot the second page the full art with the the queen and the or whatever she is the lady you know and it's like uh, wait what is this character and 
it's very poetic the the stuff they're they're saying here uh, yeah, this, this, yeah did did she have the alpha was that her name or was it uh i guess eventually the alpha would become the 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 big one that we see the with the horns mm -hmm. right? um it has the same horns kind of yeah we didn't really that whole thing didn't get resolved Right. No, I'm thinking that's an the, overall arc for the whole. Yeah, I think they're saving that for later. Um, yeah. The, let's talk about the dreams a little bit, because that was something that at first I'm just kind of like, OK, now we're we're kind of doing the whole PTSD thing again. But I I, I, I enjoyed how they played out, how um, the memories are coming back to him as he, you know, explores this place, trying to find his son and eventually you know over time realizing you know his complicity mm -hmm. uh, a little bit he was working for the company uh that he that he now uh despises um yeah. and you know kind of doing their dirty work and his involvement with the xenomorphs uh, i i mean I, again i i don't know if it's the greatest bit of story or not i don't know if it, it was, a little confusing it's, but it's a, like it's, i I, I like how it it's I found the page here. It says we both know that face huggers don't just lay eggs. When they're attached, we become part of them. While I was unconscious, I could see the aliens and not just the ones that killed my team. I saw the ones that made them too. God knows how far from here and others that didn't exist yet. So yeah. that's where it shows the xenomorph with the ram horns and the hooves. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And that was actually a little bit of interesting mythology that actually mm -hmm you could almost say like you're getting this intimate knowledge of the species you know as you're being kind of impregnated by it yeah um, and we don't really get that from the movies as much you don't have any kind of internal dialogue yeah you know, it's um, just kind of the only thing we really got from the movies is kane said he had like dreams of smothering mm. uh, which sure yeah that makes sense. that makes sense yeah <laughs> that, that tracks um but I, I but i do like the idea of like how um the creature kind of because dreams are sort of your uh, your consciousness like talking back to you and telling you something about you know how, uh, telling you something about your life and what you're feeling um mm -hmm. and so it's it's like somehow that creature now in a weird way being part of you sort of influencing your yeah. dreams it's like are you connecting consciousness yeah. with this dark entity yeah. and yeah. yeah yeah it's 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 interesting stuff um and also i like to know they you you think that they lay eggs and of course i, I think oh yeah the um i think the direction things are going now um and you never know it could be contradicted i think people are I, I think the suggestion is the face huggers are injecting um basically the black goo from prometheus mm. and the, the black goo is basically like a baby xenomorph like embryo right and the eggs are the face huggers and they're laid by the queen yeah yeah the, the, all the, yeah, the yeah those are ovomorphs the the ones that right. like that open up like a like like vagina cross thing yeah yeah they uh, reference that in here too like yeah. Say over Mars. yeah yeah that's the official like uh what they're actually called um by the face huggers themselves are like injecting basically like uh, the black goo for, mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes but until that's like you know referenced somewhere in like hard canon that's you know it's it's not but i think that's kind of where people are are, are kind of thinking and i think it's interesting that marvel comics even though even though one of the more controversial things about this series is it, it's kind of doing its own thing it's not really following the main timeline yeah um, it felt it, oh, pretty different at a few points yeah from anything um, we're used to they're still kind of referencing you know stuff like that so um mm -hmm. there also was like there was some prometheus like um uh, references in it like there's something about yeah. like there wasn't there like the monologue about like you know stealing fire and yeah exactly prometheus's yeah. fire which i guess is the black goo yeah um yeah that well in in the case of prometheus i don't i don't know if 
they're specifically talking about that in the comic or they're talking about like the alpha right right w but it was right yeah i don't i actually don't just read it and i don't actually re fully remember that um but, yeah i'm looking for that monologue yeah, yeah. but um I, I did enjoy the the father son dynamic and right yeah it's kind of like a male version of what we're used to with Ripley and Newt. Oh yeah, you know. yeah, uh, I, I yeah I mean I think it's interesting because you know Alien has always been a very um, female centric franchise. You know? Motherhood and I mean hey mother you know yeah right so. right no it's always. It's yeah. It's if, always if the AI in this had been called father, that would have been a little too on the nose. <laughs> well, there, we already father is an alien resurrection. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's too far in the future though. They hadn't yeah, thought of it, it yet. It's far enough in the future. People can sort of you know draw their own conclusions about it. Um, but um, you know, I I didn't mind that it was a male centric story. I think that's fine. Um, and it I I do like kind of the finale of it where it, there, there's a couple mm -hmm. moments in this where it's like it's not I'm like damn that's actually pretty good where it's like gabriel you know has a choice you know you know he can either like you know you know um stop the alpha and sacrifice himself or you know it, you know it, the you know basically his whole goal is to save save his son so like that whole finale where he faces the the thing on the outside of the ship yeah um is i don't know it's pretty powerful it felt pretty marvel but also very like alien like alien one yeah so i was into it no i definitely was too um overall um I thought it was, um, I, I think it's a nice little alien story. I think it, it does, you know, it, it, it hits the notes that it's supposed to, that you expect to, and it, it gives you a little bit more. There's some, um, there's some surprising moments of uh, it in this, like the aforementioned, Definitely. like uh, reveal about Iris. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's a pretty solid uh, arc. Um, now mm -hmm. issue seven, kind of sets up the next part of it and that was like right. with the they're kind of like a not necessarily a cult but they're kind of a a church <laughs> yeah they're the yeah they're like a community yeah, of people on this, on this planetoid or moon and um then the, like, a parish that, that's pretty ironic because based on the end of that one there they might all die <laughs> Well, I mean that tends to happen in the in these, in these <laughs> um, but the, the um the space station epsilon um crashes uh, mm -hmm. into it and uh, with it there's a bunch of alien eggs so it's just like well what a way to uh, screw up our paradise planet right right and of course issue six ends with the cat with the face hugger marks so oh, oh yes yeah, the whole yeah. oh, ship yeah. is full of contamination yeah, yeah not good yeah on this well, planet that they've or this moon that they've spent 20 years terraforming it's like it's perfect nothing you know it's yeah, great nothing <laughs> bad could possibly happen on such a nice planet yeah we work so hard <laughs> yeah well that's going to be the next arc um so we don't know when that's coming out um but mm. um i'm interested i feel like the you the Gabriel story and Danny story, that's obviously concluded at this point, right? I mean, I, I guess mean, Danny might be alive. Probably not, though, right? Did he survive? Did they ever confirm that? Well, he wakes up from the surgery at the end of issue six, but then the whole station crashes. So. Right, right, yeah. So yeah. he might be, like, that one woman was alive who came out and was uh, chest bursted. Yeah. So yeah, if if we're wrong, just let us know in the comics or in the comments. In the comics, yeah, <laughs> they'll write us, a whole thing. Yeah, write explain. a whole write a whole <laughs> comic, and maybe we'll read it and talk about it in the show. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Um, the Gabriel story, you know, is pretty much done. I, I don't know if the Danny story is going to continue. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm intrigued. Um, about what like the future holds for the series. It's very Marvel, very comic book of them to do this, but I like that there's like this big bad looming witch queen situation happening. Yeah. It's I nice bet. to have just some kind of like 
like obviously the aliens are antagonists but they're very like it's almost like a virus like it's they're not personified really yeah you know well they just have this animalistic tendencies and that yeah i think that kind of gives it a little bit more meaning and and depth like i said to personify it and in in such a way um Mm -hmm. like i don't know if it's different it's different i don't know if it's amazing but it's we'll have to see yeah yeah, i just like the prospect i guess yeah it's intriguing for sure um Mm -hmm. we'll we'll see we'll see what the future holds but um um so yeah yeah if you haven't read the series yet and we uh we haven't spoiled enough of it for you uh for you um go (laughs) ahead and uh give it a look um some of the uh, art in this is gorgeous too i just have to say like the full page art and some of these like shots are just really breathtaking with the color and the the Mm -hmm. detail i love some of the splash art yeah and i'm not a huge fan of like comic book art i I, like with the humans it's always it's thrown me in this a few times some of the expressions i'm like that's a little goofy like i could use it as a meme reaction for something some of these you know yeah but but, uh, because xenomorphs look on point yeah 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 um but you know i i think it's serviceable and i think they do a pretty good job um going forward but uh absolutely yeah well uh, that's uh kind of all the topics that we have for today so <laughs> um you know uh thank you for listening and uh if you enjoyed this show give us a like uh subscribe to the channel and drop uh, us a comment yeah drop a, yeah absolutely drop us drop us a comment and uh we will catch you next time take care peace out